Uh, the next one is a little bit weird. And so accordingly, I've given it a bit of a weird name. I call this property, not the um, reverse or dummy or symmetry properties, but I call it the round off property. Now, I don't know how many of you know what a round off is. Um, so does anyone, is anyone, yeah, who, who has done gymnastics of any form before and seen what a round off is? Anyone know? Cool. Okay, well, I'm going to explain it to you. It's very, very simple. I can't do one for you. Um, once upon a time, I could do one, but um, I, I will explain the, the concept and then you'll see. Okay. Um, you guys know what a cartwheel is, yeah? You know what a cartwheel is? So you're, you're sort of running along, you're gaining speed, then you kind of turn sideways and your body goes that way around, okay? And then you, you sort of land on the other side, okay? A round off is different in that you're sort of running in a certain direction. Once you launch into your cartwheel, you do a twist in the middle of the air, like spinning around in this direction. So when you land, right, when you land, you're actually facing in the opposite direction from where you came from, right? So it's really cool. So um, gymnasts tend to do this so they can launch into backflips, right? So it's like, okay, I'm, I'm running, I've got to change this kind of momentum, like straight forward momentum into something that I can turn backwards and backwards and backwards. So a round off is where you start in one direction and by the end of it, you've turned around, like midway you've turned around, okay? So let me write this and let me see if we can um, draw a diagram and understand what on earth it means for integral. Here it is, okay? So the integral, again, it's very similar. It starts off very similar to the symmetry property, but it can work with any function, okay, as I've done this Okay, I love this property. Now, how do we illustrate this? What's going on, okay? So I'm thinking about, again, a function, any function, not just odd and even ones, from negative A to A. So considering these boundaries, right? Now, what does this mean? What I'm thinking about is, first, let's have a look at this guy, right? So that's like the first half, or sorry, I should say the second half of the interval, yeah? From naught to A. So rather than negative A to A, I've sort of sliced it down the middle and taken the right-hand side. And then you add on to it this integral. What's that about? Okay, we absolutely need a picture. And then we will do a rigorous proof. Okay? Now, I'm going to choose a function. Um, you can choose, like I said, you can choose any function you like, but this will make it a little easier to see. I'm going to choose a function that is not symmetrical because you get more special properties on actual symmetrical functions here. Okay? So if I do say... Let's take a, uh, an exponential function. Any exponential function you like. Okay, so it could be e to the x, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, whatever. If I were to take the boundaries from negative a to a, right, what kind of shape am I getting? Well, something like, something like this. Yeah, there are my boundaries, and I go the same distance on either side. Yeah. So, so this is the kind of shape that I'm getting here. So what am I seeing over there on the right-hand side? Well, remember, you've got the first bit, which is the same function, yeah? <coughs> it's the same exponential function, but I'm only taking half of the area. Or, well, not half in terms of counting, but half in terms of the interval. So there's 0 to a. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's one part. Now, what does this other part signify? This um, f of negative x dx, and now I wonder if you're starting to see why I've called it this, okay? What's the relationship between these two functions? There's a horizontal flip, right? A horizontal flip. So you've got the same function, but I'm going to turn it this way. Here's my next exponential function. Mm -hmm. Now I'm integrating it because it's in the same, I've, I've nestled into the same integrating, right? I'm integrating it over the same interval here, right? Again, from naught to a. Do you see that? Okay. Now, just by virtue of the shape, you can see, oh, right. What this signifies, right, is I'm taking the positive boundaries, but I'm turning the integrand backwards, right? So I've gone this way, and then halfway, I've reversed direction. Does that make sense? Like this integral here actually represents this component, yes? So now I hope you can see why I've called it the roundup property, because literally, you're taking one part in the normal direction, and then halfway, you're going in the opposite direction. Okay. Now there's the picture, but how do we prove it? Now, um, in the past I've proven this and um, people tend to look and they say, well, when you're trying to prove an identity of some kind like this, you usually go from uh, messier to uh, straight, more straightforward. Right? So you start from the right, you go to the left in this case because that's got more stuff on it. 
Just because I've already done it before, you can look up the video if you like. I'm going to go from the left. This time, as opposed to these ones, we kind of did it here, right? I'm going to show you how to prove this property, and we're going to do it completely rigorously algebraically. Okay? So let's begin. Here's a proof. And we're going to start with the left hand side. I want to end up, I want to start here, end up there. Okay, now I'm actually going to take advantage of a property that I haven't written on the board yet, but um, that's because I'm going to refer to it a lot in period two, which is that, see this here, how I've like talked about slicing up this interval, okay? This goes from negative A to A. It's one long interval. I can break this up into however many chunks I want. Okay. Now I'm giving. I can give this a name later on. But for now, just contain yourself with the fact that if I want to, because this is an area, I can think of it as a composite area if I like. Okay. So the way I'm going to divide this up sort of accords with the um, boundaries that I have here. Do you notice that? So this has a not to a part in it. So I want a not to a part of some kind that comes out of this. Okay. So if I'm going to do that. There will be a not a part, but that leaves behind a negative a to not part. And I'd like to do it in order from left to right. That way I'll get, not get confused. So I'm going to go from negative a to zero. Yep. And then I'm going to go from zero to a. So again, I'm going to focus on this later on in period two, because we'll use this property as simple as it is. It's so, so, so useful. Okay. Now, again, just like, um, just like normal, you think, hmm. I'm trying to prove something. How close is this to my destination? And it's actually quite close, right? It's about, well, it's about halfway there. Which part do I have and which part is missing? Not the right bit, not the left bit. Yeah, okay. So this part looks good. That's exactly what I want, right? But this part here is missing and instead I've got this guy, okay? So the question is, how do I turn this into this? There's a variety of ways, okay? But the easiest way, will be to use a substitution, okay? Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take advantage of, well, you'll see, okay? Um, I'm going to bring in a substitution, so maybe you wanna put this over here on the, um, on the right-hand side. What could I introduce? What could make this work, yeah? Okay, so I, I need a negative appearing inside that f of whatever, right? And I don't have it, okay? So therefore, I'm going to introduce it. I've got an x at the moment, but I want there to be some negative sign. So I'm going to call it negative u. I'm going to call it negative u. Okay. Now this accomplishes two things for me. It's great. The first thing that it accomplishes is that it's going to put a negative sign inside there. Now the variable will change, but I know if I play my cards right, it doesn't matter what variable I've got in there. I can chop and change that however I please, as long as everything else looks good. That's the first thing it changes. The second thing it should change, as I'm going to show in a minute, is that when you make a substitution for a definite integral, you have to change three things, do you not? You've got to change the integrand, the function you're integrating. What were the other two things you've got to change? The slices. You've got to change the boundaries, the boundaries right, where you're integrating from, which is actually one of my problems. Do you notice that? I actually don't want negative a to zero. I want zero to a, okay? And that's going to happen when I do this. If, um, if this is the substitution I'm making, let's take the original boundaries and see what happens, right? If x equals negative a, what does that imply about u? It's just going to be a, negative of negative a. What about x equals 0, which is the upper boundary? Well, yeah, 0 is its own opposite. Yeah, its own, its own negative result. So I've changed my boundaries. One more thing I have to change. Yeah, the variable of integration. So I'm going to integrate x with respect to u, which in this case just gives me good. Okay. Which, of course, I can write with the negative on this side if I like, because okay. that's the substitution I'm about to make. And this is fantastic, because in one fell swoop, this awkward integral turns into exactly what I want, almost. So let's write this. Um, as I've mentioned in the past, even though it's not necessary, I'm going to write the variable that the boundaries are changing as well, because that helps me remember that I, I've changed this. So my lower boundary used to be negative a, but now it's a. My upper boundary, still zero. Okay. What am I replacing inside here? This is going to be 
x is negative u. Yeah. So that's f of negative u. So far so good? Okay, now I just need to change the variable integration. So I've got a dx that was already there, and then I'm going to substitute this in for 1. Okay, so I probably want to flip this upside down too. That would be useful. So I can cancel my dx's. Thankfully, the reciprocal of 1 is still 1, so that's nice. Okay, so in here, I'm going to write minus, sorry, negative d or dx. Yep, happy with that? Cancel, cancel. And then I still have this other definite integral hanging off on the side. Cool. All right, we're almost there, right? Now, what do you notice has happened? I actually, let's see if I can squeeze in two lines of working here rather than one. My boundaries are going from A to naught, and that's completely deliberate, right? Looks like it's weird, but it's, it's what I want. What have I got in here? Well, I've got that f of negative something that I was after. Then you've got the du here, and there's a negative sign, which is a constant, so I'm going to chuck that at the front. But do you see which property this is invoking now? Which one, which one do I want? Yeah, the very first one, the reverse property, right? Because I have my boundaries in the wrong order, and I'm going to use that negative sign at the front to change them to be what I want, okay? Um, plus <coughs> to a. Not only am I going to do that, not only am I going to take advantage of this reverse property, but it's all in terms of use at the moment. That doesn't matter, right? These are going to, these use are going to get replaced by some numbers in a minute, by a and, well, a and zero, okay? So therefore I can label it however I please. So I'm going to do these, um, these two steps both at once. I'm going to use the reverse property, which turns this into a positive from naught to a. And then secondly, I'm going to change all of my u's all into x's, because it's just a dummy variable. Uh, mm -hmm. Negative x. OK, now, I only tried to squeeze in two lines of um, working there, because the last line, the last line is this line, is it not? I've got two integrals over the same, sorry, yeah, two integrals over the same interval, not a, so I can combine them like this. You see how I did that? So, it's really important that you do all of this. Like, like I said before, it's like, wow, so much algebra. So I've tried to add words to all of this, but if you can add pictures as well, it's like, oh yeah, I know what this is about. This is that change of order, and here's the algebra that rigorously proves it. 